All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are live in period four, and today I'm going to show you how to rad. Okay, let me let me preface this by saying some people hate ratting, some people love ratting. There's parts of ratting I really really like. There's parts of ratting I don't like. Are you with me? So let's explain rad. RAD is an acronym for Rapid Application Development. Now that you guys have created an app before, you've created Pac-Man, right? Let's go look at Pac-Man. I'm going to go back into my projects. Everyone in here can go to my projects. You guys should have account me in 1.1.3 period 4 quarter 1. This should be you guys right here. Is this your app? Yeah, so does our next app involve, maybe not exactly, but does it use some things that we could have on here, or that we already have on here? Yeah. So let's go to our scoreboard. Our scoreboard, we have lives, time, and score. The next one, we wanted to have away team, time, and home team. Well, guess what? We already have three labels here. Are you with me? Could I just simply change these to be away, time, and home? Yes. Yes. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Okay, ready? And by the way, how many blocks of code do we have over here? 287. Okay. So watch this. I, you got to be careful doing this, okay? Why do we have to be careful? We don't want to mess up everything we just did in Pac-Man we worked two weeks on, three weeks on. Are you with me? So you got to be careful. Slow down. If you guys delete Pac-Man here, I'm sorry, but you delete Pac-Man here, and there's nothing I can do to get it back. Are you with me? So be careful here. Watch this. I'm going to go into my projects, and I'm going to say, okay, projects, I want to save this project as, and now I'm going to call it sound decision one underscore one underscore five. And are we doing Pong in here? Is that what we're doing? Is that what we're doing, Pong? Okay, I'll just do Pong. This is uh, period four, quarter one. Period four, quarter one. Okay, and I hit okay. Now watch this. The top left-hand corner is going to change. Not going to be called count me in anymore. What's it called? Sound decision. Okay. And now I have, okay, who came to me earlier and said, Mr. Richter, I missed all the GUI? Well, get, did you really miss all the GUI? No. You have. You have the GUI, right? All we have to do is modify this to be what we want. So, yeah, we're the GUI creator, so we control all this. Now I can go into screen one, and um, I can go to screen orientation. I can go to landscaped, and now this is landscaped. Are you with me? The game's going sideways, left and right. Why? Because that's how Pong set up. That's how soccer set up. That's how basketball set up. Football, tennis, a lot of these courts are longer than they are wide. All right? So up here, I'm going to go up to lives. What do I want this lives to be called? LBL away. Okay? And then I go down to my text, and I'm going to say this is my away, colon, space, zero. All right. I can drag this up here. All right. By the way, do I need left, up, down, and right, and all this stuff anymore? No. So I'm going to go to HA counts, which is a horizontal arrangement, and I'm going to hit delete. Bye-bye. They're gone. Okay. I'm going to go to this score. Do I need score? Well, this is going to be my home score. So I'm going to go home colon zero. This is going to be renamed LBL home. Okay. 
Do you see what I'm doing? By the way, I see a lot of people sitting here and working on their GUI, and they're not having their engineering design paper. Should you be working on a GUI without your engineering design paper? Ever. No. Should you be working on code without your engineering design paper? Ever. No. You always need your paper in front of you. Why? So your brain knows what you're building. Now, can you shut that door for me? Do I understand that we have the GUI over on the whiteboard? Yes. Okay. And why do I keep it up there? Because if students say, oh, Mr. Director, I missed last week. When you, no, there it is, right there on the board. All right. You got to constantly be looking at what you're creating. Why? So your brain knows what you're creating. I am now getting into this year where last year I did the same class all six periods. This year, yes, yes, okay, so this year, you know, my first and second period are doing two different apps, uh, you guys, uh, last period was doing tennis, this period you guys are doing Pong, are you with me? I got to constantly be focused on, am I making tennis or am I making Pong? Right? Am I making Fire Sprite or am I, am I making Z Invaders? I got to know what I'm making, right? So I got to constantly be looking at it too because the saying goes for me too. I can't program what I don't understand. I got to understand what I'm programming. All right. Are you with me? All right. Um, do I need this slider? Probably not. Delete it. Okay. Do I need this guy? Yes, image sprite Pac-Man. I need, this is going to be called image sprite home. Okay. This is going to be my home player. Over here, this ghost is going to be renamed my away player, image sprite away. Okay. And this sprite is going to be renamed my image sprite ball. I'm going to have a ball bouncing around the screen. Do you guys see what I did? So let's pause here and let's do a really quick presentation on GIMP. Okay, does everybody in here know how to GIMP? Okay, or are we getting better at GIMP? Okay, so I'm going to go into my GIMP. Okay, um, I'm going to create a paddle. So I'm going to go File New. It's going to ask me for the size of the paddle. So I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be like 36, no, this is going to be like 18 wide by 36 high. Okay? Does that look like a paddle for Pong? Okay? So now I'm going to go get my blend tool. Double click on your blend tool. And I can go get uh, these rainbows, whatever they are. And I can drag in some of these rainbows in here. And you could go into spiral too. They're pretty cool. Watch this. So you can do whatever you want. Oh, that's cool. So there's my paddle. File, export as. Um, <clears throat> I'll just call my, I'll just call this my home paddle. There is no, there is no um, alpha channels in here. So this, this can be a JPEG. So I will make it a JPEG. Why? So that I save on memory. Um, now I can go get um, an away paddle. Watch this. This is cool. You can go to Colors Invert. All right. There's some away paddles. Don't really like it, though. Um, this can be an away paddle. Export as. This is my away paddle. All right, let's go see how they look. 
So I go into my, here's my home paddle, Pac-Man upload, choose a file. Um, there it is. There's my home paddle. Looks nice. Guys can go over there. By the way, you can control these X and Y coordinates of these guys. So just move this X to like 250, Y 55. Am I? Sorry, I'll slow down. Okay. I don't want any head explosions today. That's right. This is my away sprite. Upload, choose a file. That's cool. Back that guy up, 25. That's cool. Now let's go do a ball. So balls are a little bit different in... in um, so you're going to go file new. I can make this ball like 18 by 18. That's my ball. Um, I know. I'm going to make it into a ball. So you're going to get your elliptical tool. Go to your elliptical tools. To start at the top left. Drag down to the bottom. And now you can go back to your blend tool. Um, you can go get some cool... Uh, I don't know. There's a rainbow, and I can go to spiral. There you go. And now I can go to my windows, dockable dialogs, layers. You guys have done this before. Right click, add the alpha channel, color pick the white, hit delete, and now I have a ball. File. The select by color tool. This is a ball. Can this be a JPEG? No. It's got to be a PNG. Export it. I go into this ball right here. Image sprite ball. Go to the dot. Upload. Choose a file. There's my ball. Hit OK. Don't really like the looks of that. I like that one better. Um, layers tool the the very last one. Save color values for by let. That's got to be off. Yeah. So let's reduce this size of this ball. I'm going to make it 16 by 16. So my home team is going to be this nice pretty blue now. I'm going to color code all this. The away team, I'm seeing a lot of red there, so that can say red. Now, do we need this button to go left? The answer is no, so I'm going to delete it. Do we need this button to go right? The answer is no, so I'm going to delete it. Now, could I move this guy down here? Yeah. Could I move this guy up here? Yes, this guy can only go up and down now. Yep. Now I can go to this guy, and uh, actually, I don't even need these. I don't even need this table in here. Don't even need this table anymore. So, 
You can go to this table and get rid of it. It's just taking up space. There we go. You don't like these guys? Change the arrangement. Okay. There we go. What is this? That's screen one. All right, one thing I do see we need in here is we have eight edges. This is called sound decision. You need eight sounds. So you're going to have to go to your media and drag in eight sounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So... Sound one, two, three, four, I'm okay with that. I don't like sound five. So I'm going to call this sound negative one, NEG one. This guy is going to be called sound NEG two. This guy is going to be called sound NEG three. This guy is going to be called sound NEG four. So I just have eight sounds, sound one, two, three, four, sound negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. What's up? So, uh, let's go look at my video here. 17 minutes, I have my GUI set up. Plus, I did a little bit of GIMP work in there. Are you with me? So, what does RAD do for you and I? It, it allows you to save time, right? Time is money in the engineering world. Yeah, it is kind of cool that it is kind of like that, but... So in 17 minutes, I have a GUI set up that looks pretty good. I was able to delete things I don't need or you trim the fat, right? Um, I use the things I do want to use. I rename them so my brain understands them. Are you with me? Don't leave it as Pac-Man and Dot. Are you with me? Give it a, a sound name that makes it un understandable. This guy is called... IMG Sprite Home Paddle. This is your home paddle. This is your away paddle. This is the ball. Are you with me? Do things that make sense so that your brain doesn't get confused. Who understands what I'm doing here? Okay. Watch this. This is going to hurt. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Right click. Delete. Gone. Got out. It hurts, I know. But this is a coding class, and I want you to get used to learning how to code. Actual tear. All right, let me let me explain why. Let me explain why I do that. Okay. Have you guys ever gone and remodeled an old home before, where you have to go in and start redoing the electricity in the home? You start connecting all these different wires together, there's a good chance that electricity is not going to work. Okay? And that's kind of how code blocks are. As much as I love RAD, uh, there's times when the code blocks can just totally screw each other up. Right? So, 
a lot of times, especially since we're only writing two, three hundred blocks of code, which is not a lot, uh, when you're talking about programs, um, the average the average iPhone program is like uh, I forget. It's like twenty thousand lines of code. Okay, so you guys can actually go out here and go to um, Code is Beautiful. And here you go, millions of lines of code. You guys can go out here and find the average number of lines of code. Let's go to an iPhone. Okay, Google Chrome is uh, five, almost eight million lines of code. Android is 12 million lines of code. Let's go see an iPhone app. Android app. Photoshop. iPhone, an iPhone game app is, um, yeah, it's like, this would be 100,000 lines of code. So this is like 20,000 lines of code. Are you with me? By the way, do you know how big, um, here's car software, 90 million lines of code. Google, how big is Google? Yeah. Yeah. Google is 2 billion lines of code. Now, do you think they wrote all that? No. Copy and paste, right? Copy and paste. What happens if they type in this word? What happens if they type in this word? What? MIT, MIT students created the App Inventor. That's why it's called MIT. What? What? So, what's the first thing I want to get this game to do? I got to make the block move? I think we ought to make the ball move. Or we could get the top clock to run. Clock's pretty important, right? All right, so either get the clock to run, get the ball to move. We got to start something in motion here. Are you with me? Get the ball to move. All right, so you're going to go to screen one, initialize. This starts the game. Screen one, initialize, starts the game. Okay, if I had to put a comment here. I would say start the game. You got to start the game. So I'm going to create a pr procedure here called start reset game. Okay. And this, when I pull up this procedure right here, it's going to start this game. So how do I start the game? You have something called game time that has to get turned on. And by the way, I think I've taught you this. You want that to be true, I can just go to my white space and type out true and that block will pop up. Okay, I'll teach you that over and over again. That turns my clock time on. You then come down here to clock time and start running your time. Okay. And now we need to create a variable that runs my clock time. So you're going to go into variables. Go get a name, initialize global variable name. I'm going to change its name to be something different. I want it to be called game time. Okay? And I'm going to set my game time to a mathematical 60 seconds. All right? And then down here in my timer, I'm going to set my game time 
and do the math on it, subtract backwards. Because we're starting out at 60, then we're going to go 59, 58. So I'm going to go and get, get my game time and subtract off 1. Okay. And then anytime you you do something to your game time, you have to display it. So we have an LBL label here, dot text. And you want to set it to be a text join up in your text box. And this is going to say time, colon, space. And then right here, you're going to get your game time. By the way, when you reset the game, guess what? You want to do this same thing up in here. You have to make it. So, yeah, I can slow down. So... Start reset game is for procedure right here. You have to make it. It's a developer made procedure. And then all this stuff right here you can duplicate. Let's stop right here and see if the time runs. So my time runs. I get 60. Okay, everybody see my time running? That's the beginning of a game right there. Get your time to run. You, you, you could go over here and type whatever you want. Right? Right? I could type whatever I want, right? And then over here, now in my procedures box, do you see I have one that calls this? Okay. How many people have their time running? Once you get your time running, let's move on. That's what I have so far. You working? What's the next thing we got to get to work? Let's make the ball move, right? All right, so now we can make this uh, the ball start moving. So once again, when we start the game, the ball should start moving. So the ball has a heading. Have we talked about headings before? Heading zero degrees is east. 
Did we write this down last week? Heading 9 degrees is going north. Heading 180 degrees is going west. Heading 270 degrees is going south. So we're going to set the heading of our ball to go. I want you to go randomly somewhere in between here. Where? I don't know. It's a question mark. Pick somewhere between 0 and 359 degrees. Okay? So when we hit start, we're going to set the ball in motion. So you go to image sprite ball. And there it is. There's its heading. I'm going to duplicate this. The next thing I want to set is its speed. And the next thing I want to set is its interval. Okay, so you guys see how I did that? Heading, speed, and interval. So I'm going to go get a math box, random. And now I can go between 0, head 0, and 359 degrees, because 360 is essentially back to 0. So I don't need to pick 360 because 360 is 0. They're the same thing. So I just randomly pick something between 0 and 359. Now I need to give it a speed. Speed is going to go somewhere between 10 pixels per tick and 25 pixels per tick. How far do you want that ball to move? And then the interval is how fast you want it to move, 10 to 25. I can go 10 to 25 really slow. 10 pixels, 10 pixels, or you go 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, you with me? So now it's important that you set a, an interval, and let's say this interval is, um, I don't know, 250 milliseconds would happen four times per second. So in 1,001, I would move four times some random pixels between 10 and 25. So if I hit 25 and I move it four times in a second, that's moving at 100 pixels per second. You guys with me on that? And now let's just go see if this thing starts. If this doesn't work, we got to go back to the drawing board. Are you with me? Going to download. Okay. I got the ball to move, but is the ball moving correctly? Probably because of the heading. When you head it, it could rotate it. Remember, it heads at a 360 degrees. So. What that heading does is it rotates that left corner 360 degrees. That's why you need to have a ball versus, is that a pumpkin that I see? It's an orange, okay. So, so my the ball stops right in the corner. What do we have to make it do? With? And what is the wall? The edge. the edge. Do you remember we studied edges? This was on your paper last week. Edges, one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three. Do we need to go over that again? Who, who understands the edges? Who does not understand the edges? All right, let's go over edges real quick. Okay? 
Do you guys remember this was the north edge? This was the northeast edge. This was the east edge. Southeast. South. Southwest. West. Northwest. Who gets this? This edge was one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Who gets this? Okay, so we when we hit an edge, you gotta figure out what edge it is and then bounce. Are you with me? Go towards another edge. So all you do is come down here to your ball, say, hey, image sprite ball. When you reach an edge, when the ball reaches an edge, what should it do? The ball should bounce. And basically what this is is a randomizer here. It's going to randomly get another edge to go to. It's probably going to figure out which edge you hit and then go to some one of the other seven edges. I don't know what the code is behind here because, once again, MIT wrote this code. But I can tell you this right now. It hits an edge, figures out what edge it's on, and then starts heading towards another edge. It probably uses an array of eight shelves, and it says, hey, if I'm on, if I hit edge one, you can go to any of the other seven edges. Right. I, I mean, like, if you go back here, if I hit edge three, it makes zero sense to go to two and one. So it probably, if it hits three, it chooses between 1, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. You can do that math. I can throw those five edges. Okay. So let's see if it works now. Ball is now bouncing around the screen. Can I get this to work? All right. You're going to get better at creating code, creating apps every time you build one. That's why it's important to get apps underneath your belt. The more apps you can create, the better you're going to get at doing this. Um, what code did you put in here? Random speed. You sure it's speed? It's the image sprite ball. What was your interval? 250. Okay, you got to change it out. <laughs> 